Hello and welcome back to Mephitabita. I'm on Def, of course, and today I'm going to play with the quarry from Buildcraft. And I've got built this special room that looks just like the outdoors. Don't ask how I fit all of this inside of the Mephitabita mountain, because I'm not going to tell you. Uh, to start playing with the quarry, I'm going to place down these landmarks. These are just called landmark. Uh, two words. And uh, these are used to define your size of your quarry. So we're going to make it that long on that side, this long over here. We're going to knock the pig off of the barrier there. Um, you only need three to define your shape. You right click one of these guys and they're going to create your square or your rectangle depending on how you set up your landmarks. In my case I think it's a bit of a rectangle. Uh, this last corner is assumed because this laser and that laser intersect here, and so that assumes that this is the other corner of the square rectangle. You don't have to put a landmark there. Uh, and then we come over to this side, really any side, doesn't matter which one of the three landmarks you put your quarry down on, but you put it right next to the landmark and the landmarks pop off. They do pop off of the ground, so you, if you want them back, go pick them back up. Notice in my chat there, the quarry at place at the location will keep two chunks loaded at all times. The quarry acts as a chunk loader, so if I leave, say go to a Mistcraft world or go to the Twilight Forest, this area will continue to stay loaded and the quarry will continue to pump. Um, now the quarry can take quite a bit of build craft power. In fact, it can take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Minecraft jewels. Each of these electrical engines output one Minecraft jewel, and that's why we're going to use nine of them. Um, and, of course, each one of these needs its own wooden input pipe, and then we can connect them all with golden conductive pipes, just like that. Now we've got ourselves a nice power system. I'm going to come down here just for a moment, because we need to provide these guys with two forms of power. First is redstone. That's what we'll do here. Here's redstone power. These ones need support blocks. We've done this before, I know. And the second is uh, IC power, which is, of course, done by a generator of some sort. We'll use cold coke like we normally do in Muffetabuta. And I forgot my cable, so we'll grab a cable. Because this is longer than four, I'm going to use the glass fiber cable. You can use whatever kind of cable you want. Um, just keep in mind, if you're using copper cable to transmit longer than this, longer than four, you'll get some loss in your cable. Right? Okay, just like that. Now, we do want all these pointing back at the wooden transport pipe, so we'll use a wrench to go ahead and get all these guys oriented the correct direction. Like that. Perfect. Now they're all pumping into the conductive pipe. We can see the power transmitting through and into the quarry. Notice the quarry is going to start digging. Oh, well, it didn't have anywhere to dig. It's going to start placing structure pipes. These orange things here. We've got the little floaty robot. It's running at not quite full speed because he's haven't fully heated up yet, but pretty close. And uh, it's going to build out a frame, and then it's going to start digging. So this won't take, well, it's take no time at all with nine, nine Minecraft jewels. Um, you can make these quarries pretty darn big. You can make them 64 by 64. Now note that 64 is the landmark width. And the, this block here underneath the frame, these blocks won't be dug by the quarry. So the actual dig space on the quarry will be 62 by 62. Um, but it's been said, I've never tested this myself, but it's been said that if you do it that big, it would take an hour to dig out a single layer. So you have to decide whether that's worth it for you. But there we go. It's now digging, and you can see blocks pumping out of the quarry, just going absolutely crazy. So we want to not have them go crazy. We want to store them. So we put a pipe on it, and you can see now the items are coming out of the pipe. Of course, now we need to store these crazy things. So I'm going to make just a little bit of space here while it just pumps all the dirt and the gravel onto the floor. There we go. So that should be enough space for now. And I'm going to just go right down this line. Doop, 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 doop. And start plopping chests down. One, two, one, two. Whoops. That's an extra pipe. One, two. Yeah, it's not the most efficient design, but it will do the job. Right, of course, pr items will go up into those chests and get stored. So that's really it. Make sure you include enough chests for the area that you're digging out. Um, depending on whether there's caves or ravines or anything down there, you may 
need more or less chests, so I won't tell you how many you need. Just uh, have enough. Um, really, the last thing to say about today is that it is useful to have your quarry sitting over some sort of water, whether that's water you've placed yourself or something else, because the quarry cannot dig through lava. So if you want to be able to go through the lava, you need water to turn it into obsidian, and then it can dig the obsidian. So that could be useful. It's also useful, it's actually most efficient, if you place your quarry over the ocean. Why? Well, first of all, there's water, so you can turn the lava into uh, obsidian and mine, out the, mine those blocks out. The second reason is that the ocean bed actually starts a whole lot lower. So your value materi valuable materials like redstone, diamond, and whatever else, it gets to a whole lot faster. So you actually dig a lot less blocks and you get a lot more of, per time, you get a lot more of the uh, valuable resources. Of course, you know, depending on the mod pack that you're playing, you may decide that you want to dig at higher levels to get copper or you may decide, oh, I'm playing the normal mod pack and copper spawns all the way throughout the world, and it doesn't matter. So it you know, just depends. You have to make a decision based on the materials that you need where you want your quarry to place at. I like to go ahead and just start at the top of the world, let them all dig all the way to the bedrock, and then deal with the hole later. So that's what we're going to let ours do in Mephitabita, and uh, just enjoy all these materials. All right. We'll keep working on this system. We're also going to keep working on the uh, the f automated forest. Don't worry about that. We'll come back to that, the automated tree farm. Um, but that's it for today. I'm Mondef. Thanks for watching the Futipata. <laughs>